Sailor 1911 standard size fountain pen. Uh, I have one in the Fresca finish, which apparently is a finish only sold in the United States. I started this video uh, recording it on my usual dark background for this notebook, but the color was so goofy. And this is much more like it really looks. So I just went with this and I redid the beginning. Uh, I think it's a very attractive pen. It was marketed in pictures with citrus fruits and I'm a fruit and vegetable guy, so yeah, probably too many of them. But uh, I'm a fruit and vegetable guy, so that marketing really worked for me. And I was getting interested in Sailor Fountain Pens. Uh, so between last fall and this spring, I've actually picked up two Sailor Fountain Pens and several Sailor inks. So this is a... Uh, you might wonder what makes it different. Well, I have a Realo here, which is a large... 1911. And you can see that the standard is just a little bit smaller. Uh, apparently there are several sizes and I'm not that knowledgeable about the Sailor Fountain Pen world to say anything intelligent so we'll just go with it. Uh, I like the trim rings. I like the... I love the color. Open this puppy up. It has a 14 karat gold nib which I'll give you a close-up of in a minute. Screw cap of course. And it's a cartridge converter pen. Uh, I have heard some people say that the Sailor converters are terrible. I've never had bad luck, but that's me. Now I'm going to put on the magnifier, which I had to ch I changed the batteries just so I could do this review. Uh, this pen is worth looking at under the magnifier because it has what's called a zoom nib, which is unique in my fountain pen collection. Well, why aren't you going on? Alright, so when you look, let's start up here. So 14 karat, 585, so it's a 14 karat nib. My other one is a, a 21 karat. That's not an N, that's a Z for zoom. I'll come back to that. Uh, 1911, the, the Sailor's Anchor logo, which I like, and some fancy doodads. And then we get to the nib. Now, to show the nib, I think I need a whiter background, yeah. So let's look at it from the side. See how it's cut in at an angle like that? And now I'll look at it from the bottom. Nice ball, blob. But then we lift this up here. It comes to a point. Which I know we're all quavering, or I'm quavering, you're not. You might be sick from all the camera moving. But what that does is when it's laying down really flat, then I get a very broad line. When it's upright, I get a very thin line. So it's an easy way to get some line variation out of this one nib. I think that's clever. I uh, won't say that that's a feature I use all the time, but by golly, I like it. So let's take a look at how this guy writes. Because as I said, Sailor is supposed to be known for its nibs. So this is a Sailor 1911 standard, I think. I don't care what size, really. I'll focus it here in a second, and it's a zoom nib. The ink, I have to look up because it's one of those complicated names that I uh, can't seem to keep in my head. The Sailor Fuji... Musumi, Musumi, something like that, which is uh, Wisteria. Slightly off the subject, but uh, I've always loved the look of uh, Wisteria hanging down from like a trellis overhead. Uh, just beautiful. I don't know if I could ever do that in North Dakota. It is so dry here and so windy and so hot in the summer. I don't know if Wisteria could handle that, but that's something I'd like to research because I think that would be really cool if I could pull it off. Uh, if I can't, I'll just have to look at other people's stuff and drool. Uh, not a flex nib, really. I can coax a little bit of flex out of it, but not, you know, a lot. Uh, just writing it like this, you don't notice much. Here's where a zoom nib shines. So if I go almost parallel to the paper. It's like that. 
when I go almost perpendicular and knock the camera out of my way, so you'll have to wait a second, there's almost perpendicular. There's totally perpendicular. So if I, I'm going to do this with my left hand, which ought to be interesting. So if I come along here, as low as I can get, and start raising the pen up, you can see in my clumsy fashion that it gets narrower and narrower. So that's what a zoom nib is. And apparently when you're writing with a brush pen, which it's some, I guess it's meant to somewhat be like a brush pen, if you want the narrower lines, you're more upright. If you want the broader strokes, you're more downright, down angle. All right, so let's check out uh, wetness and flow. You can probably already tell it's got that in spades. I misspelled flow there, but <sighs> that's nice. Uh, the smear test. which is as much a function of the ink as it is of the pen. Yeah, and let's just do it real quick upright. In fact, turn backwards just to get as narrow a line as possible. Still some smearing. And speaking of that, let's do some reverse writing. So you can get some additional writing that's even uh, finer than you get when you're totally upright. Mm -hmm. So all in all, very interesting nib, very interesting cut, and I like it a lot. I, uh, I will admit that the finish caught my eye, but the reason I bought it was I wanted a zoom nib, and so glad I bought it. Now, uh, you'll want to see it right, so let's pull up here. By the way, postable pen. I don't typically post it, but it's perfectly comfortable if you do post it. Oh, it's right this posted. What the heck? Live dangerously. That is way too many. There we go. So I know some people would look at this pen and say it's a cartridge converter pen. Uh, a luxury pen should be should have its own filling mechanism. I'll tell you the advantage of the cartridge converters from my perspective is that they're a lot easier to clean. Um, I like them. I don't mind it as much as I used to. I'm, I'm glad I have a few with a built-in filling mechanism. Um, I know people have complained about sailor converters, but I've never had trouble with one. I'm just very happy with this pen, and I do feel comfortable with having bought it. Uh, that said, it is a little bit of an expensive pen, and uh, you know, when you're at this price point, it's you, you have to start asking, is it really worth it? I mean, I got a piston converter pen for about five dollars. Not piston converter, piston filling pen for about five dollars. So uh, that that's worth questioning. And by the way, I'm Probably you can see on the camera. I'm sweating a little. It is in the 80s in the living room. I don't have air conditioning. It is in the 90s right now outdoors. And it's going to get to around 100 degrees outdoors today. So, yeah, it's a little warm in here. Sorry. But, anyway, back on the topic of the pen. I, I feel cooled off and refreshed, almost like it's spring every time I look at this color. I just love the looks of this pen. Uh, the nibs. I think Sailor did a smart thing by really focusing on nibs. If you really start researching Sailor, they have a lot of interesting nibs. Uh, lit nibs where there's like two or three nibs double stacked, where they have slits going in two different directions on the nibs. Um, Stephen Brown did a series of videos where he compared the different Sailor nibs. I, I think that's interesting. I think a certain number of them might only be useful to an artist. And I just don't do enough drawing where they would be worth it to me. I, I find it interesting that they've done so much with nibs. So, uh, I even if you don't like this color, I think it's a pen worth looking at. 
Uh, if you don't like this size, they have a little bit smaller pens. They have bigger pens. They also have pens. I don't remember what they're called, but they have the ends squared off. Uh, same nibs. So there are a lot of good options in the Sailor line. There's even some very low-cost options with steel nibs. And I would encourage you to think about them, too. So I hope this was interesting. hope it was useful. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.